This is the great legend, and I am coming at you live with DC's new 52 review of Frankenstein, Agent of Shade, issues 9 through 12. Now fans, sorry it has been so long since my last DC's New 52 review. Uh, my last video was I reviewed the Frankenstein Agent of Shade issues 5 through 8. And it was excellent. Just like all the DC New 52 reviews I've done. I felt I've done pretty good. I'm not just tooting my own horn. I really love doing these reviews for you out there. To show you just how cool the DC's New 52 is. Um... Check it out. Just check it. Check it out. Frankenstein Agent of Shade, issue 9. Check out that cover. Look at that cover. Mylar, of course. Is there any other? My Lights 2 is how I roll with it. Standard size. Put it in an E-Gerber fullback. That's how I roll with it. That's how I roll with it. The Great Legends is back, and he is ready with another DC's New 52 review. Like I said before, we're talking Frankenstein. Agent of Shade, issue 9 through 12. Coming at you live, we have Rise of the Rot. Look at that. That's sweet. I love this comic. It is freaking awesome. This one is written by Jeff Lemire, uh, pencils by Alberto Pantaselli, and the colors by Wayne Foster. So really good book. This issue, it kind of ties in with um, Animal Man. Um, it's the part where Animal Man uh, goes to his mother-in-law's house and he disappears um, on that, like, where his mother-in-law lives out in the country. And then after that, he disappears, his wife, Ellen, and, um, you know, the two kids disappear. So Frankenstein is sent down to find out what happened to Animal Man. You know, a strange disappearance. Not only strange for Animal Man just to be disappeared, but his whole family disappeared. So, he goes down and he comes up on the body of the old um, police officer um, that was Animal Man's friend. You know, the police officer that the rot took over. He was out on the ground, kind of close to the lake, the, the police officer, because the three, the uh, evil three, um, killed that police officer whatever they were called I can't remember their names haven't read Animal Man lately but um, so he comes up to him and he's got Nina with him you know the uh, underwater girl creature chick the doctor Nina um, Mazur Mazurski I think's her last name she touches the um, because she touches the uh, rot or you know the infested sheriff guy rot corpse looking creature um, and she gets its thoughts. It, it wakes up um, and it tries to attack him. You know, saying the rot will get you. You know, the zombified talk. Rot will take you over, blah, 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 blah. And then uh, Frankenstein got, gets the big sword out, starts cutting, cutting the meat up. So every time he cuts it, it just adds a new piece of rot that comes after him. So he cuts into 50 pieces. He had 50 little rots come at him. So finally, um, Father Time's like, well, do you want us to send the other uh, agents? And he's like, um, you know, the Howling Commando. No, is it Howling Command? Creature Commandos. Man, I'm thinking uh, Dum Dum Dugan over here. No, the Creature Commandos. And, <laughs> and he's like, uh, no, don't send them because it's too much. You know, it's too much. So he uh, asked um, to have a firewall put up and then drop a black bomb. And so they put the firewall up so it's all contained, drops the black bomb. What the black bomb does, it destroys everything that's living. Um, so it destroys all the rot. Now, of course, he lands on top of Nina, you know, so he protects her. So she doesn't die. She's still alive. And, of course, Frankenstein can't be killed because he's already dead. <laughs> uh, you know. So that was a, it was a good issue. This was Jeff Lemire's uh, final issue on Frankenstein, Agent of Shade. I love the art by um, Alberto Ponticelli here. This book is just excellent. I mean, it's like Secret Agent, but Frankenstein, classic monster style stuff. Um, 
they had funny lines in, in all issues 9 through 12. I'm, I'm not going to go over them, but, but stuff I kind of got to chuckle out. So that was issue 9. Really good issue. Kind of just a solo issue, you know, just on the hunt to, for Animal Man. I think it was, um, to go in a little further about it, I think it was, for me anyway, now these are just my thoughts. Um, if you want to read these, check out the link below for links where you can buy these issues and the trades. But, um... And also for these issues, I'll start putting, uh, since I'm doing these in sections, I'll put links um, to the other two videos that I've done for Frankenstein, Agent of Shade. Uh, but being Jeff Lemire's last Frankenstein, Agent of Shade for, uh, I think it's Matt Kent, I think that's his name. No, take that back. Lemire did another issue here. Then Matt Kent took over. Okay, I'll, I'll let you know I, about this. But being one, okay, this isn't the final final, but being one of the finals, it's kind of funny. He kind of ties in a little a bit of his Animal Man because Lemire did Animal Man as well. So Very good. Really like Jeff Lemire. Good author. And I love the art by Fantasielli here. This is the second um, one I'm showing you tonight. This is Frankenstein Age in the Shade issue 10. It's got all these like little insects that play a pretty pivotal role in this, the next three issues. I think they're called EM bombs or something like that, or EMs something. We'll just call them bug bites. <laughs> these little bug guys. Look at the cover though. Frankenstein, Age in a Shade. It's infested. You know bugs, but they, they infest. They get up in your covers, in your bed, in your mattress. <laughs> little bed bugs. This issue 10, though. Now, also, another good thing about these books, they're each $2.99 and feeling fine. Ain't no Marvel Now up in here. That mess is $3.99. It's $2.99. Let me tell you a little bit about DC. They got some good $2.99 books, and they're better. <laughs> yeah, baby. Frankenstein, Agent of Shade, issue 10, coming at you live with the bugs and all the shit up in there. All right. So this is a good one. Um, Jeff Lemire, Alberto Ponticelli, Wayne Foster on the colors. Um, so in this issue, they get word. Um, Frankenstein's in the library, chilling, looking at his books. He's a, um, a literary guy. He loves to read. This one library, and she looks pretty good looking too. He's trying to put the moves on him. She's kind of heard some rumors that there's a mole among shade. Then all of a sudden he realizes these bugs are attacking him. Now what they use these bugs for is these bugs are used by shade members to take out bad guys. They're kind of like little ninja bugs I would say. They just, you know, just you throw them out like ninja stars and they just attack and go crazy and just destroy, kill, fight the evil. However, these bugs are attacking Frankenstein. So, really weird stuff. So Father Time, he's looking and getting his people say, like, well, what's going on? Who could be the mole? Who's the mole? And they find out the mole, the last person that used some of these bugs, and the last person that um, chimed in with Shade was a, a agent. Her name was Crowley. She looked um, blue. Blue, and I don't know if it was fur, but kind of looked mystique-like, if you will. Um, kind of a blue lady creature. And they found out she was the one that sent the bugs after Frankenstein, right? So, they got to figure out what the hell's going on here. So, they send... Um, Frankenstein to start 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 searching for. There's a place called Untropolis. It's a uh, another kind of city that is in another dimension. Untropolis. Everything's upside down and backwards. So Frankenstein, Nina, Velcoro, and um, the Wolfman guy. I can't remember his name right away. Um, maybe starts with a G, but that's okay. Just the awesome team. Because remember, uh, Callus, his head was his was decapitated from him. So he's still out of action in this book. He's the mummy character. Um, what happens is they go, and they go to this Untropolis because they're looking for um, Crowley, the double agent. And during the whole time, Crowley is still sending these freaking bugs to hurt um, Frankenstein. So... They come in, and to get to this dimension, they have to be wearing these jetpacks. And you enter the dimension by wearing these jetpacks. So they're all flying around and, um, you know, making stupid jokes about them. But 
to enter through the dimension you have to have your jetpack on if you don't have it on your atoms and your body you'll just disintegrate so they all have their jetpack on jetpacks on um, they get to a landing point they all start searching Nina stays um, setting up a base camp Velcoro the vampire guy he stays with her to watch her back and then um, Frankenstein and the Wolfman guy Griffith I think's his name I want to say Griffith let me look but while I talk the um, they go and they're on the trail of this Crowley I'm gonna make sure it is Griffith and they're on the trail of Crowley let me see if I can find you some of the awesome artwork yeah Griffith is his name so I did remember here's a little pic of Crowley that blue kind of girl now she's kind of ninja like there now um, her story is she is supposedly just a poet a writer but also she's a shield agent um, here Griffith gets attacked he's kind of lagging behind so he gets attacked by those bugs that she's sending out and anyway so he gets attacked now during all this time um, another phenomenon is happening to uh, Frankenstein agent of shade he is starting to remember things he's starting to get flashbacks of parts of his life parts of his human life and he has a lot of human lives why he has a lot of body parts on him so he's getting these flashbacks and a lot of the body parts from uh, Frankenstein agent of shade are um, body parts of killers criminals um, guys that did really bad things so all of this is taking place as well he finally catches up to Crowley and gets information from her um, she gives in he scares the bejeebies out of her and he she says that the person that's um, trying to do this is the person in charge of Satan's ring it's a uh, small little uh, it's a ring it's about the size of a room I'd probably say maybe yeah, 16 feet diameter um, but it's a room in the, and in the ring you can see images of the future and the guy calls it Satan's ring I'll get to his name in a minute because I forgot his name <laughs> but uh, yeah so now he is on the track for this so he leaves her and, and they they leave out but before they leave out she sets a trap and uh, turns this gas stuff on and he falls through window and he, he free falls and he falls and he's about to hit the ocean and if he hits the ocean without the jetpack on because the oceans one way to get out to teleport out of this dimension that they're in called untropolis so what happens is he falls through the water and then um, you think he's in a, a die right but it's a cliffhanger which DC is awesome because they do awesome cliffhangers and you gotta pick up the next issue this cover here Leviathan so the thing where the um, Satan's ring is in a place called Leviathan and I'll tell you a little bit about Leviathan in a minute but so he hits in, by the right when he's about to hit the water Nina comes in with her jetpack and saves him um, because she has the jetpack on jetpack wasn't made for two people but Nina makes it work although she's very badly injured because the point of impact of him hitting her while she somewhat catches him it injures her and plus um, they get teleported the Atlantic Ocean while Bel Belcoro back in issue um, Ten, he was also had to hold his own against those bugs as well because he they needed him as backup. So, Volcaro and Griffith, they're back, and they're gonna get their exit out of there <laughs> pretty soon. But they're still in the um, Untropolis. While Nina and uh, Frankenstein are gonna look for this Leviathan. Now, what Leviathan is supposedly, it's a retired base um, that's no longer used, or so Father Time tells Frank. Um, but what it is, Leviathan is a big sea creature, you know, like the myths, the Leviathan. And inside the sea creature, inside the sea creature's mouth, there's a whole city. And the people that live in this city cannot get out of the Leviathan. The Leviathan is a city of retired shade members. So if, you know, once a shade member is old or they're done and they just don't want to fight the fight for shade anymore, shade uh, lets them retire in this Leviathan thing. If they are not working with shade or if they want to or if they're out for their own or they do shade wrong well shade will send them to the leviathan to keep them there so what happens is um frankenstein 
He um, cloaks himself with a device. He leaves Nina because she's still injured at a shade safe house, which they have quite a few of those since it's a shade retirement home, basically. And uh, what happens is she um, she stays there because they're going to send Callus. Callus finally has his head back on. He's the mummy character, and he heals people, so he's going to go meet up with her and uh, heal her. Um, all at the same time, remember, Frankenstein is still having these visions of, of murders, um, criminal acts that he did. Um, with all you know his body parts did you know and anyway so he finds um, this guy in a bar and he gets the information out of him so now he knows where to get this bad guy let me um I'll get his name out of the next one but um this issue was a really good issue that he found where Satan's ring was um, and he goes to Satan's ring um, which was good. Um, another thing that he does is he decides in this issue and another part of this issue he's going to kill the Leviathan because the key is if the Leviathan feels like it's dying or about to die this big sea creature will um, swim all the way to this Leviathan graveyard where all the old dead Leviathans are. It's going to swim to this graveyard and then um, they'll have a new Leviathan. So all those people that are trapped in Leviathan, the retired folks from Shade, who don't want, they want to leave out of there, they don't want to be like retired in there. They want freedom, you know. Um, they don't want to be there. So Frankenstein, he's going to kill Leviathan. And now he's got a lot of people that are backing him because they want to get out of that. So really cool issue. Um, and of course this is Matt Kent's uh, first issue writing I couldn't really tell much of a difference in this issue now the next issue I can definitely tell and I'll tell you why okay let me bring out issue 12 this is the third part of the Satan's Ring story um it's called the secret behind Satan's Ring okay this issue I did not really much care for. Um, I love the art. It's still Alberto Ponticelli and Wayne uh, Fotcher on the embellishments and the colors and everything. I just didn't like this issue, um, the writing style, because what it was, it told the story of this issue in past tense. Um, Father Time was asking... Um, what the heck happened? And then his little assistant buddy um, was telling him what happened throughout the whole story. So you're kind of getting everything not in real time. You're getting like a historic story. Um, so what happens? A lot takes place. He, um, The reason why Crowley was um, the mole, her job was to assassinate... Frankenstein because the guy inside Satan's ring saw Frankenstein killing himself um, so that he wanted to kill Frankenstein and um, in this issue Frankenstein he confronts Crowley again he gets to the building where the Satan's ring is he um, this is after he's hacking away at um, it's Agent Bellroy. Well, Father Time talks to Agent Bellroy. He's the guy with the really, you know, kid and play, the old rapper. He's got that high hair, and he just looks kind of weird. Um, he got Bellroy to tell him what happened. So Frank is cutting, still cutting the Leviathan. Um, Callus comes and heals Nina. That goes on. Frankenstein confronts Crowley again, goes up the elevator to this building for Satan's ring. The guy's name is Agent Mycroft. His, um, he's got the um, kind of the Mo Howard bowl cut there, and he's he's really scared. The ring, you see the ring with the uh, visions around him. Um, so he's scared. He's begging for his life. Frankenstein's, why'd you do this? Well, I saw you kill me, and then all this stuff goes on. And what happens is Frankenstein... This guy's talking some trash. He's saying, well... You, you think I wouldn't have a fail safe? Because Frankenstein's ready to blow up this whole building and destroy the steel. This Minecraft guy, Minecraft, <laughs> I said Minecraft. This Minecraft guy said, uh, you don't think we'd have a fail safe? And then he blows up the building, but at the same time, what it does, it creates all this destruction. It, it like kind of screws up a whole area of things. 
and there was a spell on the ring so if it does blow up a lot of things like screw up it's kind of hard to explain it's the spell ended up being catastrophically unstable catastrophic and anyways what happens is it knocks um, Nina down to the ground like and she's really hurt dead almost if you will or about to die and um, Callus, the mummy who's normally a healer his thing is he can heal he's not able to heal her because his powers won't work without an organic source and this ring screws up his powers so he can't heal without an organic source so what happens is Frankenstein he's badly burned because the building blew up this is actually just kind of a no-brainer quick issue he blows up his, or he gets blown out of the building 90 percent burns all over his body but what really happens here is remember the um all the people that wanted to be free um from the leviathan uh Callus gets um energy from them so he's able to heal nina and somewhat able to heal frankenstein so frankenstein wakes up and nina's there and Nina this time doesn't have her uh, helmet on because you know normally she couldn't breathe air this is a, a f another throwback to the creature of the Black Lagoon trilogy so <laughs> so if you're a classic monster fan you'll love this book but uh, what happens is it heals Nina so well that she doesn't even need the helmet anymore I think that was not revenge of the creature but a creature walks among us where the creature original creature of the Black Lagoon can now breathe air so now she can breathe and when she wakes up and Frank wakes up they have an embrace they have a hug because throughout the um, issues the four issues here um, Nina and Nina's drawing closer to Frank Frankenstein and kind of being you know a shoulder that he could cry on or, or whatnot or, or just a person there to care for him and they share a hug um, at the end of this one which was nice but the story itself um, it was a rushed story I think they probably could have went a whole nother issue but they really condensed this like because Belroy or Belfroy and Father Time or you know Belfroy was telling what was going on um, and of course they were using um, the shade um, thing where you know Father Time can read what all shade agents are doing through their cool computer and things like that so this was really good I mean another four good issues um, great stuff and of course at the end of this one Frankenstein now has an army of all those people that he's freed from Leviathan he's um, tired of um, father time he doesn't like how father time handled um, his wife or his uh, child that, and that was of course in issue uh, 8 when Lady Frankenstein quit the a, a shade group so now Frank has his whole army of retired agent shade agents and who knows what what the future holds for Frankenstein agent of shade I'm uh, I'll be reviewing issues um, 13 14 wait 13 14 15 and 16 pretty soon um, and it has to do a lot with the rot so I really love this series again I'm going to go back through um, my first two Frankenstein Agent of Shade videos and add all the links to all of the Frankenstein Agent of Shade uh, DC, DC's new 52 reviews that I've done for this title. Thanks again for Sleepy Reader 666 um, giving me the idea to review these in story arcs. Um, I'll go ahead and put his um, username in the video description because I want you to check Sleepy Reader out. He's a big Jeff Lemire guy um, and a great friend. So fans, this is the great legend for another DC's New 52 review. We have the Frankenstein Agent of Shade issues 9 through 12. I hope you enjoyed this and we'll see you next time when we see when we do more Frankenstein. All right. So this is a great legend saying peace out. God bless.